Despite missing two-thirds of the greatest big three ever in Draymond Green and Klay Thompson, Golden State rebounded from a rough start to own the fourth quarter in Rip City and have now won nine of their last ten games. They move into a tie for eighth place with the Kings losing to the Pels, and they get crucial rest for two pieces to the main core, entering a tough back-to-back -back at Chase. In the headlights on Friday night, a six-seeded Pelicans team fueled by Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, not to mention one man averaging 28 points per game in his last five, CJ McCollum, and another man posting 20 plus per night in his last five, being Trey Murphy III. Despite TJD having a career night defensively, the Dubs reignited Beast off the bench up front in Loon Dog was somehow even better than Trace. As Kevon Looney matched the rookie's total in blocks, but was also a game high plus 19, and finished with team highs in both steals and rebounds. The three time champion being in all around good condition is more dangerous than you'd think, as Looney has become underrated. However, it was Wardell getting it done when it mattered most, as Chef's the obvious favorite for Clutch Player of the Year. Stay tuned for why that's the case, including how the Warriors flipped the switch just in time. To reverse a rocky start. Only 13.8% of my channel's audience is subscribed according to YouTube, so if you're in the overwhelming majority of people who are watching and not subscribed, I'm not sure why you're not, please subscribe. Keeping pods in a routine of coming off the bench that's paid dividends, in replace of Thompson and Green, Kerr opted to start Paul and Kaminga. With the new lineup, it took a while for the dubs to adjust. Meanwhile, an aesthetic hezzy tween cross double tween combo from Portland's third overall pick Scoot Henderson chained to a step back kicked off what was a shocking Blazer start. Unfortunately, a shameless no call with an official directly in front of this play sees Curry get raked across the arm. Thankfully, TJD was there directly after that no call to rise up for a forceful swatting of Jabari Walker. Middle Stagger sees Curry execute, but watch closely as Steph gets hit directly on the hand on this follow through, making it back to back Curry shots that should have resulted in free throws to open the game. Curry shot just one free throw the entire night. The open court quickness from Scoot was showcased when he scoots through the entire dubs roster, but Kaminga comes down hard as hell with his head snapping back and hitting the hardwood. Scary fall to say the least. By the grace of God, Jonathan will be just fine. And sometimes getting shook up is all you need, I guess, because right after that fall off the bounce with the dubs down seven in the early going. Kaminga would isolate DeAndre Ayton, who gives him a clean look, and JK's shot just clears the front of the rim. Looney's early offense high ball screen to open up a Curry shot from deep range that Stefan knocked down, in addition to Jonathan's off the dribble bucket before that, settled the Warriors in after a more than rocky start. Kaminga back down and drop step to his offhand, nets a nifty lefty post hook. For a fourth straight hoop, Jonathan would benefit off this Bajemski defense collapsing pushing of the pace and splitting of Walker and Henderson facilitation, which Kaminga fetches in the flow for a transition throwdown. Looney would stunt onto Scoot to help CP out on this drive, then rotate back to Ashton Hagens, shuffle with his drive to force an entry to drop Wreath, who's blindsided by Moody, but credit Looney for being there for this SWAT to complete a multi-effort defensive stance. The footwork from Loon to close the quarter right here is on point. He lurches into position under the basket and lunges for a contest just at the right time for a second swat in just over a minute. The type of shot Kevon made on a gamely basis during his days at Alexander Hamilton High where he became 2014's Wisconsin Mr. Basketball is attempted when Drop Wreath lets him loose while he's coming up to set a screen. Portland would throw out a full court press, but Moody and Pajemski make the right read to respond to the pressure in the backcourt. Paul settles things down and watch the high IQ off ball movement from the Congolese killer to fill out the lane. Then Jonathan up fakes and sweeps through, which in turn fakes a pass to Looney and a Joku dribble for balls and get close into a finish over three white jerseys. High low action with Looney and Pajemski has Hagen's reaching and off balance, collapsing the entire defense, which runways a Kaminga line drive through the lane. Pods then withers through traffic to find an angle for this dish, leveraging a monstrous Kaminga finish. The cutting Kaminga. Getting switched on to Dwap. Chris Paul signals kick out to Moody with his body language to freeze Wreath, then CP3's well aware he's created enough room for his mechanics to take over. 
Following a Curry brick, it's Trace Jackson Davis muscling to fend off a player drafted 34 picks ahead of him in last year's draft. Watch the elite hands from Trace and stable balance to navigate the baseline to collect this O board. He then redirects out to the arc to DHO to Wiggs and it leads to a step back triple. Massive play from TJD. Another perfect response to the Blazers going with a high school-esque full court trap was Pods taking it coast to coast and finishing ambidextrously. Scoot Henderson losing track of Curry in transition, which is a recipe for disaster, but also an early O Wiggs cross frees up a Wardell the second triple. This was one of a few charge calls that didn't go the Warriors' way. If you watched the entirety of this one, you saw Moody get run over in the first half but get whistled for a foul, and despite Jabari Walker steamrolling pods right here, Walker gets to the charity stripe. That's either a no call or a charge. Giving a player free throws for that is unethical, just play on. Moses Moody meshed with Pods and Loon for 26 points off the pine. A Curry Loon Dog two-man game has Murray and Henderson sagging, so it's a step overhead to Moody, and Moses does the rest. This personality-changing push-ahead by Pajemski collapses Chris Murray onto him, freeing up a timely facilitation to Paul in the corner, and Chris drains a massive three. Credit to the young Blazers, though, for keeping things close, but the last possession of the third frame gave the Warriors an extra jolt into the huddle. As they deal with this Henderson screen denial perfectly, and the Brandon ball pressure forces a man drafted 16 picks ahead of pods into an embarrassing giveaway. But Portland keeping it close all throughout only set the stage for an all-time clutch performer. Off a of pod's kickout, Curry would again get hit on the arm but hear no whistle, yet he'd still knock down a stone-cold deep-range bomb to cut the dub's deficit in half. Steph gathering this loony DHO sees him draw two, then set up Loon for a wide-open throwdown. Snake dribbling into the lane off this Looney Tunes ball screen, it's Steph drifting to his spot from the midi, and to score or dime drop on a ninth straight field goal generated point when his team needed it the very most down the stretch to overcome a deficit, the should-be clutch player of the year uses a split action to perfection for this deep-range bomb before skipping to his Lou. On the other end, Minus Dre, it was Loon stepping up as the Dubs' defensive anchor. Kavon would laterally shuffle to stick with Scoot's drive, but credit to Pods as well, who makes a fantastic rotation to block DeAndre Ayton. The Warriors were abysmal for most of this game, but clamping down to hold the Blazers to zero field goals for a 6 minute and 37 second long span in the fourth quarter shows you the Warriors' defense is reaching a championship caliber level. Doing what they just did without Draymond is actually scary. On a lighter note, Curry would steal the rebound from his rookie teammate at the buzzer, to which Pods would sarcastically take exception to, running after him to cap off a vibe-enhancing fourth period where the Dubs turned it up to eighth gear. Scrapping out a victory not only without Draymond and Clay, but with Curry shooting just 8 for 22 from the field, showed you Golden State has built up a nice habit of finding a way to win games when their best player isn't having his best shooting night. That said, there's no denying how a top three player of all time should be the clutch player of the year. Stefan has four go-ahead shots with less than 10 seconds left in the fourth quarter slash OT this season, the most in the NBA. Most insanely, and a fact that should win Stefan the award by itself, is that Steph's just 53rd in fourth quarter minutes, yet fifth in fourth quarter scoring. When it comes to strictly the clutch, he's first in total points. That right there, folks is your clutch player of the year. While Trace Jackson Davis had a career high four blocks, Kevon Looney was even more beastly on the defensive end. Kevon also looked rejuvenated in terms of his springiness offensively as the roller. The period of rest I recommended Kevon should take a while back in this video has paid off better than I could have ever imagined, as after taking a few games off, what's developed into one of the most intriguing recent storylines with this Warrior team is Steve Kerr and his coaching staff having an in prime condition 6'9 with a 7'4 wingspan 230 pound beast up front at their disposal. If you don't have a healthy version of Looney for stretches throughout playoff games, Draymond and Trace are going to get worn down, and given the Warriors roster is lacking a traditional center, Looney's stature, hustle, and fundamental abilities up front on both ends are make or break. 
Golden State now faces a legitimate possibility of playing just one play-in game to advance to the postseason instead of two. Knotted up with Sac down for the number eight seed with two games left. How does Golden State handle New Orleans on Friday night? Can they get it done? Compete for free merch with your take down below. Shout out to JJD, who says, I think the Warriors are good enough to knock off any contender in a first round series. Well said, JJD. Appreciate every take, your boy DFlow signing off, and I'll see you next video.